Hello everyone. I am Onolina from Thinkas. I am the project coordinator for Junior Kolkata Literary Meet 2022, and it is my great pleasure to welcome and welcome back for the, those who joined us in the morning uh, to the online iteration this year. This is our sixth edition of curating this festival in association with the Tata Steel Kolkata Literary Meet. And while we would have loved to have these sessions online, we are glad that we are able to see you in this way as well. I am delighted to have with us today two wonderful artists and authors, Likla and Kripa. Thank you so much for being a part of JKLM 22. Likla writes for children about art including IPPY award-winning Art is a Verb, published by artists. She also writes for Little Light on a curriculum about the self and for Panic Not, a TTRPG storytelling collective. Beyond an ardent love for books, she finds joy in a lifelong practice of dance and movement. Kripa is a children's book illustrator based in Mumbai. She took up teaching and art design after completing fine arts from Sir JJ School of Art. Having been an art educator for over 17 years and having worked with art and design institutions like Srishti School of Art, Design and Technology. In most of her books, city and art have been recurring themes as she is working on representing urban realism, thus enabling children to view their cities with new perspectives. Her art is rooted in her engagement with her city Mumbai, its children, people and their problems. Two of her books have been featured in the Parag Honor List in 2019 and 2021. Today, uh, Kripa and Likla will talk about their book, Shumna Thor Wounds. I would also ask all of you who have joined us today to share any questions or comments you may have on the chat. And we will take those up during the Q&A that we have towards the end. And with that, without much further ado, I would like to pass on the mic to Likla and Kripa. Thank you so much for joining us again and hope you have a wonderful session. Thank you so much for having us this evening. I'm Likla. Um, I've written Somnath for Rooms. I'm Kripa. I'm the illustrator of Somnath Hor. And we have one more person, uh, Shambhavi, who is actually the designer of the book. She isn't here today, but uh, she is the one who designed the book. And it's published by Art First. So um, we thought we would start a little bit with a little video that Shambhavi actually made uh, as a part of the promotion for the book. Um, and I think it will give you a good idea of um, the artist as well as Kripa's wonderful illustrations. Um, and I will share it right now. So we have two questions for you. Um, what are the wounds you carry? Will and you share some wounds of words of healing? Uh, do you think you could post these two questions on the chat? And if you guys have any answers that you'd like to um, write in, in uh, response to these questions, do let us know. And we'd love to hear uh, you know, what your th thoughts are. Um, since we can't see you face to face, this is our little way of connecting with you. Um, and I think what we will do is we'll read the start of the book to you. Um, do you want to take it from there? Yeah. Shall I repeat the questions? The two questions that we uh, asked them. One is, oh, it's already written there. Oh, so the we need not. Okay, so. Have you ever had a wound, a little bruise, a cut, a scab that you simply cannot look away from? The way it changes color, purples, reds, and greens. 
Oh, and how it itches on your skin and in your mind. So Nat's mind could not stop itching either. He had seen wounds much bigger than the scab on your knees, wounds made by war and hunger. They haunted him. This is a sad story of pain, of hurt. But don't turn away now. Don't close your eyes. It is in pain that soon that story began. So as you must have figured out by now, this is about the artist Somnath. And uh, he was actually born 101 years ago, a uh, long time ago, in, an, in a period that was before the independ India's independence, right in, in the middle of the freedom struggle. Um, and this was a time before uh, India, as we know it existed, uh, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan was, were all part of the same um, nation, so to speak, or rather colony at, at the time. Um, and uh, post, post partition, he ends up coming to India and he settles down here in, in Bengal, actually, where all of you are, I'm guessing. Um, and from when he was young, he was really, really interested in art. I think it was a way through which he looked at the world. Um, a way to understand the world. And uh, at that point, there was a lot, like I said, a lot of um, turmoil because of the freedom struggle. And he was one, he was, he was very talented as an illustrator. So um, he was asked to go to some of these key places and um, document what was going on. See, this is a time well, well before we had our cell phones and one could just take a photo or a video of what was going on. So he actually goes there and he's got these journals where he's written down what's happened. He's um, created portraits of, you know, the key people uh, in the farmers uh, movement, etc. And also, you know, people who have gathered, who are ready for something new that was going to happen, this new nation, uh, all these questions that people had. And uh, some, some of these were, you know, dark, almost a little dark, because uh, there was also at that time a, a lot of poverty. Um, he also ends up to, you know, early on in his childhood, he sees war, he sees famine. And you, you, so you see these sketches that he's created um, where he he's just observing the world through his art. And that was his first sort of pathway into uh, becoming an artist. So Kripa's, um, Kripa's illustrated this book. So would you like to talk a little bit about his art? Uh, so I, what I also want to highlight is after Likla has mentioned uh, this artist who lived a hundred years ago, 101 years ago. Uh, why are we talking about this artist now? Uh, and how is his work relevant to today's times? Um, as Likla mentioned that uh, in the past, uh, in our history, um, Shomnath uh, has documented uh, through his art, uh, he documented famine, he documented the farm, farmer's movements um, and many other crises that uh, uh, we were embroiled in at that time. Um, let me also mention that history repeats itself and we are constantly finding ourselves in similar crisis even today. Um, so, and, and we also look around us at so many other artists who have given a voice to these crises, but through their art. And uh, that's one of the reasons why Shomnath's art becomes relevant uh, today and even a hundred years from now. Um, because we also have, we, we can look back and we also know that uh, uh, we can learn from our past. Perhaps we can, we can study our past and we also know why we are the way we are today. Only when we look back and into history. So that's why books on history, books about uh, our historical past and about our artists who spoke about, uh, who spoke in an empathetic language is very, very important. And I think the one thing I'd like to add to that, Kripa, is especially when, when we talk about history through art, 
um, I find I like I really connect to it because it's almost like this tiny window where you can peek in and see what was actually see what was happening. It's not just words. It's not something that you know someone's written about it. It's not an opinion, but it's almost like a screenshot of what yeah. was happening there. Like and that. it's your chance to um, come to your own conclusions about it and you know see if there are any connections to the life you're living today or what you see around you today. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, because art does not document history in a linear way. Art has a very unconventional way of documenting history. It does not tell you history. It shows you history, uh, which, uh, which also is uh, important because then you draw your own conclusion, you draw your own understanding of history. It's not fed into your, your minds. It's also interesting to, to think that maybe if you make a painting today of what is going on and what you see, maybe 100 years later, people will look at it and it's a glimpse into the past for them. Um, but back to so Yes. <laughs> um, we're going to talk a little bit, or rather Kripa is going to talk a little bit about his works. Sure. <laughs> and him as an artist, I think. Yeah. Uh, so when I was very uh, excited when Likla actually sent me the script, uh, Art First and Likla got to me with the script and I was very excited because I had studied, I, uh, my, I, my college is JJ School, of Art, uh, JJ School of Art and that's where I studied. And in JJ, I happened to come across uh, Shomnath's name and I've seen his artworks only briefly. So this was my chance to actually study uh, his artwork. Uh, in detail. Um, so what I, the, the first step I did when I received your script, Nikla, is I started sketching. Um, and through uh, sketching, I, thank you. Through sketching, uh, I wanted to understand uh, what was, uh, what was really happening. Uh, why did Shomnath, uh, uh, particularly choose a certain medium, a certain style, uh, because in his early years, I must also tell you that Shomnath is one of these art, one of the artists who lived a very illustrious life uh, up to the age of 95. And uh, for these at least 80 years of his artistic practice, he, practice, he engaged with the same theme, uh, one theme, and that was wounds. Um, that was wounds, and uh, and when the artist, I also wanted to understand what happens. Uh, how is the evolution of an artist and his art form uh, when an artist engages with the same theme over and over, over and over? Um, he's also uh, the early parts of his work is where he was sketching a lot. Uh, the Tebhaga movement is where he sketched a lot and these sort of figures appear in his sketchbooks. Um, figures of emaciated, very scrawny figures where they were dying of poverty or famine. Uh, this was a time of Bengal famine and he documented this along with his other artist friend, Chitta Prashad. Um, they, they walked around uh, they actually physically walked around um, the whole of uh, Bengal, documenting them, sketching them, live sketching um, these people. So you see these kind of figures appear in his sketchbooks a lot and, and his understanding of uh, what is happening, uh, documentation, even written documentation in Bengali. And then later on, uh, was that uh, then he moved to sculpture? No, then he moved to printmaking. Uh, uh, that's when he started teaching at Shantini Ketan and uh, uh, he started teaching printmaking. And when he engaged with the medium of printmaking, he uh, printmaking is also a medium where uh, an artist, especially an artist like Shom Nathur, who was obsessed with uh, achieving a certain perfection, is what we heard from. Uh, um, from Shomik uh, uh, Nandi, uh, so who is actually a historian, an art historian, who told us that he was so obsessed with uh, perfection in his uh, in his etching, in his uh, in his litho works. Um, so that was his printmaking time, and then further from printmaking, in the later part of his life, he moved to bronze. Um, 
the earlier works of bronze. Uh, where again, these bronze work, I must tell you that they're very different. Unlike the sculptures that you see outside, uh, you know, the, the, the average sculpture of a human figure um, is not, not, normally has mass in it, normally has weight and depth to it. Whereas uh, Shomnath's sculpture, Shomnath's bronze, were almost hollow. They, he, uh, he was, uh, he, you know, he hammered them, he would hit them flat and he attained this kind of a, a way in which the bronze could actually uh, stand um, uh, against the force of gravity on their own, even though they were absolutely flat. Um, so, so, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, you know, so this notebook that I'm showing you uh, is a Kripa study of um, Somnath's work, and she really dived into it for almost a month. All she did was kind of look at his work and um, make studies of those works. So, can I? Um, I'm going to open up. I think one of that previous works we've been looking at, and while you were sort of observing his works, were there any particular um, realizations or observations you made, um, like when you create, when you actually use these lines and they're so, you know, stark, but also confident in a way yeah. um, in depicting these, these forms that are obviously in pain. Uh, any observations, any thoughts, or actually about any of the sculptures? There were a lot of uh, reflections after, I mean, where it's only after the sketchbook up you know, after I started working on the sketchbook is when I actually came to uh, Shomnath's character arc um, and then later on moved to the illustrations of the book. Um, the one uh, very important understanding which uh, which I actually, which was anyway, uh, I think our conversation with Shomik Nandida uh, and uh, even Pranabda um, uh, had highlighted this was uh, his... Uh, his obsession for uh, uh, figures which are not, uh, you know, the, the faces, the, he was, Shomnath was one artist who was not concerned about the facial features of, a, of the human being, but depicting the suffering and the feeling of, the human, of, of a human, uh, of a community of people. Um, so that's what uh, struck me, uh, that uh, he was not an artist who was particularly uh, engaged in depicting uh, a human being, but a collective human suffering uh, through his art. That, you know, that makes sense because it wasn't just one person he saw in pain that he captured. It wasn't just this person, yeah. but uh, groups and groups of people that shared this pain. Um, so in a way this person is, has become a symbol or um, an example of, of what's happening. When everybody was, he himself, it's not, you know, we may talk about him as a, uh, you know, document or whatever, but he was, he was part of it. He was part of the people that was going through, you know, all of these phases of suffering. Yeah. Um, Even animals like love. Uh, yeah, yeah. He painted so, you know, you, you find, and I really hope you go and uh, take a look at his works at, um, at Akar Prakar um, Gallery. They have uh, his collection. But as you can see here, you know, he, he would draw dogs also starving. And sometimes there are these connections where both the human and the dog are sitting with the shed yeah. Bowl and there's no food, but I don't know, somehow at least to and me, also depicting the empathy. interdependency yeah. of one another, yeah. right? I mean, the, how uh, these domesticated animals uh, share um, the, a collective grief along with human suffering, uh, whether it is a dog, whether it is uh, even the bull or uh, his uh, pig sculpture that, is, that just recently got auctioned. Um, so I think uh, uh, he was most concerned about depicting uh, the domesticated animals who shared a collective um, uh, human suffering. So, I mean, kind of coming back to our book, I guess, it's called Goons. It's very much about uh, him and his obsession to understand why, like, why, why are we in pain? And why are humans in pain? Why are animals in pain? Why is such a thing as suffering? Uh, and why is it so constant? And uh, 
it comes out in his artwork. It's not that he went through this and, you know, eventually he's in Shantani. He's in Shantani Ketan for a very long time to, you know, the end of his life with his wife, his daughter. Um, he's fairly comfortable, one, one would assume. Um, but he doesn't forget it, you know. It's, it's not like how, okay, this happened to me in my past, my childhood story finished. Uh, he really, really, really wanted to understand it. And you'll find that in other artists' works as well, where they get obsessed with some idea, whether, you know, it's the concept of friendship or color or love or really anything. So this was the thing for, for Somnath. And I think, Kripa, we should also maybe talk about him as, uh, he was one of like the fathers of printmaking in India. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he experimented so much uh, with with print printmaking yeah. um, processes that uh, it really sort of changed the game. He had so many students at Shantaniki they took forward his work, and then eventually Kripa also learned how to <laughs> <laughs> print make, and then hopefully you read our book and do some of our activities and yeah. go to art college, and then which which uh, also uh, our book has so many of these print making activities, which, yes. uh, which gives a brief introduction to what print making is. Uh, oh, but Litla, you must tell. Uh, them about uh, my favorite part, the coffee spilling part, from oh, where yeah. the art print okay. comes out. So, I mean, these are some of the activities that are in the book. Um, try them out and let us know how you feel. With, send us what you made. Um, the book has our like email ID and everything. Yeah. So we're, we'll be really, really happy to hear from you. This um, is my copy of the book and my children have actually tried some of the print works also. So. <laughs> I'm just going to show them. This is a carbon printing. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I think this is my sort of favorite I know. key story, <laughs> but uh, the, he has these journals, like we've mentioned before, and they're available to read. Um, there are four, four journals over different parts of his life. And there's one story where he writes about how, uh, and this is, of course, when he's much older, um, at the point where he was making sculptures. Yeah. Him. And he's drinking his chai, uh, and the, the, the cup kind of spills, and it falls on his lap and soaks through his uh, clothes and burns his skin. And that's painful. But uh, all he was thinking of that moment in that moment was, oh, is this what a victim feels like? Is this one more uh, component to the concept of pain? Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he instinctively put himself in the shoes of, uh, of the sculptures that he was making, mm -hmm. the, the idea that archetype, so to speak, of the victim that he was always kind of creating around but you know I think Kripa one of the things we should probably also share and it's really hard because we can't see your face so we don't know how um you know what's keeping you interesting interested and in what's uh, sort of where we're losing you but the one thing I do want to say is that uh you know people are always like oh hey it's a kid's book uh why is it so dark <laughs> right yeah yeah. Um, where are the unicorns and the puppies but no not at all uh, I, I don't think we really have to tell you that, yes. that. Um, but I think more than pain it's a story about empathy and I know for a fact that you have got hurt I have got hurt I've had wounds on my knees so have you so did Sona so did Kripa so did everybody and I know that's like the tiniest thing but it's a start um, and if you can feel that, then you can see if somebody else is in pain. And that's exactly what Sumna did. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's just so much going on in the world today uh, for all of us. So if we open our hearts a little bit to each other, it's just a, a warmer place, I think, um, to live in. But I'm going to maybe leave that to you to respond to. That's why we had our questions up there. Um, what are the wounds you carry? And will you share some words of healing with other people who are in pain as well? Yeah. Um, are and there any responses for the... Yeah, we'd love to see if you have uh, any questions and responses to our questions. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I'll come in now. And I've received uh, some responses uh, from the Thinkard's WhatsApp. And I'm and a few on Facebook as well. So I'm sharing it on the chat here for you to see. And I'll also read out a few. Uh, 
So one of, you know, wounds being teased by classmates, missing friends, uh, arm breaking, uh, moving to new cities and uh, words of healing uh, such as hope, this will change, find a friend. Uh, so these are some of the responses that we've received. And uh, a few questions as well have come in. Uh, one of them being, uh, and you may have slightly already touched upon it during uh, the conversation, but if you could add on anything uh, to that, which is uh, what made you write the book? Okay, so, you know, we've been writing about art and about artists uh, for a while. So that's, you know, that's my space. Um, and I feel like we have covered it, but coming up to that hundred. Um, you know, poet centenary, so to speak, was a good chance to think about these artists of the past. And mm -hmm. as Kripa said, try to look at what, what we can learn from the past. Um, and I think that, you know, I wrote this during the pandemic, at the such, in 2020, at the, yeah, like the end of the first year of the pandemic. And um, I didn't realize it at that point, but obviously um, I was as troubled as, the rest of us, right, by this this huge crazy thing that we are all in together somehow. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't really think very hard about it, but clearly something, um, I connected to something in him. I think it was that whole thing about suffering and about empathy and um, someone who really cared about the world. Uh, and, and that's something I definitely felt. Um, yeah. yeah, I'd like to add that, uh, um, I've been engaging with this idea of uh, taking art to children and taking children to art uh, for, a, for some time now. And uh, I also think that, uh, uh, you know, while writing for children or illustrating for children, uh, I'm not, I mean, I don't dumb the content down. And uh, I think we consciously kept that in our uh, mind, especially your Shomna Thor work where you go to an art gallery and there's, uh, it's a it's a gallery of multiple exhibits and Shomnath's work distinctly stands out because um, because uh, of the subject that he dealt with because it's heavy and it's very deep. Um, so uh, there were a lot of questions that were asked by parents uh, by different gatekeepers I think to us about the subject of wounds and why uh, you know. Uh, have such a deep, uh, heavy subject for children, and um, Likla articulated that so well. Um, so I, I, and I, just to emphatically uh, put this once again, I, I, I sincerely believe that uh, um, that children must, uh, 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 you know, must be taken to art, and art should be taken to children. And and this is uh, no better way uh, through, uh, than through books, is what I believe. Totally, Kripa. In fact, one of the words of healing that has come in is art. Um, yeah. And I think we strongly agree with that. Um, and thank you so much for sharing that. And I, I love the fact that you mentioned that, you know, um, not dumbing down content for children. I think that's very important. And because it's not like children don't experience these emotions and feelings. And uh, I also really loved earlier, you mentioned something about how it's a dark book, but it's uh, it shouldn't be seen as a book about pain, but rather about empathy. Uh, and I really loved, uh, you know, that sentence. It really uh, resonated with me. I think that's a wonderful way to look at things and, uh, you know, put it forward. And it is also slightly linked to uh, a question that was asked, which is, is a wound something that uh, makes us obsessed and feel sad and anxious? And what do we do about that? I think uh, we could probably go to the clock exercise, your favorite. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this, is, my this is what it looks like. Do you want to open your, yeah. your copy where sure. your kids will respond? So it says your, uh, I don't know if you can see, but time passes. What happens to the wounds? Exactly that question. Um, and it says wounds. And then there are all these spaces where you can kind of fill in your answers. And the two that I've written are wounds heal and wounds fester. Um, 
Do you want to read some? <laughs> yeah, I've not. I've, I've, so I've brought Lula's copy. I've not got Ruth's copy. But in any case, I yeah, I'll tell you about the the clock. So my son. Um, okay, the children over here who are also listening, I would like to tell you there's a there's a there's an activity. Uh, there's a clock that's given in the book. And uh, uh, like Likla mentioned, there are two uh, uh, blanks where it says wounds fester and wound uh, that heals. So uh, what uh, he started writing in the blank spaces, my son is 11 years old and he started writing in the blank spaces about the time when he got hurt on his, on his knee, when he fell and, it, and he got uh, hurt on his knee and how the wound, the physical wound that he got, it changed over time and he started writing that. And as he wrote that, he went back to the, as it started healing, what it also ha what also happened is that the clock brought him back to the point where he got the wound. Um, so that sort of left him with a very deep um, um, understanding um, that, a very abstract understanding that wounds and healing are not mutually exclusive. They are not separate. They happen, um, you know, they, they are together within. So I think, uh, you know, somewhere uh, that, ha that understanding happened through these activities or through the book. So I'm glad that happened. So, so may I others think, also find. I think, yeah, you find your own answers to that yeah. question. And uh, I, uh, the same uh, person who's asked that question has responded that they, their wound has been sort of the pandemic lockdown. And uh, their words of healing, however, is also, uh, you know, hopeful. It's, everything is going to be okay. We are not, uh, we are here for you. We are not alone. And I think that's uh, exactly uh, some of the sentiment that the book uh, echoes. And I think that's really lovely that uh, the children tuning in are uh, catching on to that. Um, I also had a personal uh, question to ask as well, uh, if I may, uh, which is uh, that uh, as, uh, and especially for uh, Kripa and the designer perhaps, uh, which is as an artist yourself, uh, what was it like to create a work based on another, you know, an, uh, another artist, especially an eminent one like Shumnath, or uh, was it sort of intimidating to tackle it? Was, it? was there scope to have your own sort of personal style and subjectivity, uh, you know, to add that into it as well? Uh, if you could answer that, yeah. Uh, so Shomna Thor, uh, when, when I was illustrating Shomna Thor, I was also illustrating another artist, uh, his biography, Meli Gobai, um, who is a, a, a contemporary Indian artist. And uh, so what also uh, became interesting is that, uh, so my, my, my process of working is where um, I actually start dating these artists, Annalina. I mean, I, uh, <laughs> so to be very honest, uh, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I become a student. Uh, so it's, it's, I become a student, I become completely a devotee, I become, um, a, but yes, I, I also want to understand every aspect of the of the artist um, and it becomes important especially with the biography so we did look for uh, so many other details of the artist's childhood of the artist's personal life how was this um, his relationship with his uh, children with his uh, with his wife and other aspects also um, uh, which actually uh, is difficult to find uh, of an artist who belongs to a certain era where not much has been photo documented or written uh, documented beyond his journals. Beyond his journals. Um, so uh, it also worked in my case because then I could uh, I could hero worship him. I could really <laughs> love him. But I don't know how the newer artists of our generation are going to be perceived because everything is an open book today. Uh, so much of the artist is out there. So I think these artists are not intending to be hero worshipped either. I think these are artists who are um, who are perceived in a different way and also um, uh, you know in a more, more human, uh, human to human way. Yeah. So yeah, I mean for me as well, I I think 
constantly through my life, if I had to use one word to describe myself, it would be learner. I really love to learn. I'm an absolute nerd. Um, and I, I love sort of getting into the minds of these artists. We read everything we could get our hands on. Both of us did. We spoke to people. Um, and it's such an incredible opportunity to learn. Um, outside of any specific institute telling you to do so, a teacher or a parent or anybody. Um, and you get to make your own connection with them. You get to know the lessons you want to learn or you're ready to learn from them. Um, and I think the, making these books as well, each one is very unique because it comes from the artist. And we, that's what we want to do. We want to bring these artists to you, right? Um, the best way that we can through through what we do. And I think that comes through in the illustration as well mm -hmm. as the design. And design is very, very important. And I wish Shambhavi was here to talk about it. But she also, you know, was part of all of the interviews we had with art historians. Um, she also knew a lot about Singapore through the process. We early in, you know, as soon as the manuscript was done, we were all part of the discussion. So it's not a, an isolated process. We work together to um, create this immersion, almost this medium to bring bring him to you. That's yeah. 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 Thank you so much. And I, you know, again, I do agree if, if one can when they read the book and I uh, am going to be sharing a link for those of you who are tuning in and have not yet had the chance to uh, that there has been a lot of uh, research a lot of love has gone into the creation of uh, you know this book here and uh, so one can tell that there was sort of that entire process behind that went on um Another question that uh, came to us uh, from WhatsApp again is uh, if you uh, yourself had any sort of favorites among Shognatho's works that you encountered while you were doing your research, if you had to pick any, uh, would you be able to pinpoint it? And if they are there in the book uh, at all? Shognatho's works? Yeah. Do you have a favorite? I have a favorite in my book. So okay. you can show yours. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So my favorite of Shomnathor's works is the dog, the dog, dog sculpture. Um, so this is one of my favorite because also because of the story that uh, Shomnathor told us. If you remember, like, uh, so I've written down the story here. This is actually short. <laughs> okay. So the story goes like this, that uh, the dog sculpture, a bunch of students who had come to see Shomnath's uh, sculpture, the bronze uh, dog, uh, Shomnath would actually preferred calling his works bronze and not sculpture. So I'm going to stick to the word bronze. So this, a bunch of students, school students who had come to see the dog sculpture, uh, bronze, and, uh, Shamikda asked them, what does it look like? And, and if you see that the dog is not um, the, I mean, it's of course it does seem like a dog, but uh, it's not it's not a barking dog. Um, so one child says, but it's barking, um, and uh, Shamikda says, uh, but it doesn't seem so. So uh, the child says it's barking with its body, you know, not with its mouth, <laughs> which was so profound and it left a very <laughs> lasting impression on me. And I had to have the, the sculpture illustrated somewhere. So I just put uh, that uh, in one of the pages here. In the book, in one of the, that's so yeah, so Kripa is basically all, all of the, the works that you saw in her book, the studies, are part of the, I mean, we didn't really go into detail about your illustration, but, um, you know, there are all these little hidden, hidden bits in it. Um, like here you've got an illustration of so not the young boy um you've got the the train going ahead and then this is a study of his work um as well of the jobs right yeah yeah um at the time so kripa's really working this together really well okay so my favorite keeps change kept changing i feel like the more i got to know about him or whatever i was reading at the moment i really uh, really love that. So, <laughs> um, so I don't know if I have like one favorite. I feel yeah. like I have 
um, many it's favorites, really but I think that the, you know, the picture that's on our yeah. cover is really, really interesting. So he has these, um, it's basically pulp, pulp print, print, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, when you look at the works, they're so uh, subtle. Yeah. But at no point do you, uh, here, so this is the whole, whole thing. Right. And if you were to see it physically, it's quite three dimensional. All of this um, pops out and then there's just this subtle hint of red. And it's such a strong um, sense of wounds, I think, mm -hmm. this whole series. It's just so, so powerful. Yeah. Um, In fact, the cover is uh, the, the pulp print uh, is the... Uh, is the technique he arrived uh, upon after uh, his uh, the, the coffee incident that Likla mentioned, uh, where he spilled the coffee on his thigh and he burnt and charred his uh, thigh and he was soon taken to the for a dressing. And when he was being dressed and he was in pain, he realized that he himself was a victim, how he victimized his bronze by hitting them, by kneeling them, by torturing them. And, uh, and then further, he took that pain and uh, onto paper. Um, and that's when he experimented with paper and he came up with this uh, new method of printing called the pulp printing, where he would impregnate the paper, um, uh, handmade paper, with, uh, with these prints and inks. I think that's really interesting and you know, such an insight into uh, the artist's mind. That, uh, what was went behind uh, somebody who was creating something like that and uh, again a very very interesting personality as well uh, we have a question and uh, again feel free to uh, not answer but i do know that there's a section at the end of the book that does address it to a certain extent and the question is uh, do the authors uh, have any wounds and i remember the book at the end of it there uh, is a little bit about that. So if you would like to uh, address that. What are our wounds? I mean, of course, we, we all have wounds and I don't think we need to get into it, but we can show you a bit of our, you know, our biographies at the end. Yeah. And uh, it's Likla's wounds and then Likla's art, um, because I think those are kind yeah. of the two sides of this yeah. process. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. And um, I am once again reminded of you know that uh, wonderful quote by uh, uh, you know what I draw is the unfolding of my being which in my case is inscribed as wounds uh, and I think that came across very beautifully throughout the session and it does come across really wonderfully uh, in the book I don't think we have too much time uh, for the session uh, can, can, I, can I have a minute just really quickly. So thank you all for responding to the questions and sharing your wounds as well as your healing. We see you and we very much acknowledge you. Um, and I think, uh, you know, if we were here all physically present and talking, we could respond in a different way. But for now, um, read the words of healing that somebody else has written and take them as yours because they are meant for you. Thank you so much for that wonderful sentiment. And uh, thank you so much, all of you uh, who joined us today for the session. I am going to be sharing a link uh, on the chat for a website where you can purchase the book if you'd like. And once again, I'm sure a lot of people will, given the beautiful illustrations and the stories that they've uh, seen and read, you know, heard today. And once again, thank you so much, Litla and Kripa, for joining us for Jumia Kolkata Literary Meet. Um, I would like to also take this moment to uh, let everyone know that we do have more sessions coming up tomorrow and the day after. So do uh, keep tuning in and we hope to see you once again next time. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye.